Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Busy couple of days. We are going to see these mild to hot mornings going into the steamy afternoon, and these afternoon and evening storms are going to develop. But unlike your typical pop-up storms, there's going to be more of them. They're going to be slower moving, and they could produce some stronger winds. So let's get right to the details here. This is the way we'll likely wake up every morning this week, and you'll go, what are you talking about, storms, Brad? Well, the atmosphere is getting amped up right now. What's happening currently? We have deep tropical moisture. In fact, a parameter we look at called precipitable water pushing two plus inches. So that means a lot of moisture. Think of a sponge that's completely saturated. And so any storms that develop are going to be able to squeeze out a whole bunch of moisture here in the Carolinas. We also have a weak front and trough coming in. This little trough or front is our trigger. It's just enough in the summertime with this crazy heat and humidity to initialize scattered showers and storms. And what will likely happen this is pretty much like clockwork. During the middle of the day, we'll start to see the ridge tops. You see the, the clouds building? That's where the storms start, and then they move to the south and east, and that's where we start to see the big time storms develop. So a couple things to show you. First of all, we do have severe weather risk. Um, it's in the low to medium range. Anytime you get heavy rain this time of year, you can get wet microburst or downburst. That's our primary concern with any storms that develop today, again, tomorrow, and honestly, even parts of Friday. So you see three days where we have a low to medium risk. Not super crazy. It's not a typical spring setup. This is the typical summer severe weather setup. Water loaded downbursts, which brings a lot of heavy rain. But we also have that heavy rain risk. So let me talk about that. So this is our excessive rainfall outlook. You could see most of our areas in the yellow, green, which is low to medium. And then we've got this moderate to really you know significant threat for flash flooding. Why is that there? Well, guys, this is where we had the, the remnants of Chantal or even Chantal itself move through, which saturated the soil. So that area has a high susceptibility to flash flooding, but really the whole area is an elevated risk. Tomorrow, still in that medium to slight range. And then even on Friday, we're in that low to medium range. So potentially we're going to see some flash flooding. And one of the things we look at, and I showed this yesterday, flash flood guidance. So what does this mean? How much rain could it take to cause flash flooding in one hour? Look at these totals, especially here from Charlotte East into the Sand Hills and up into the Raleigh, Greensboro area. About an inch to two. That's, that's doable. A summer storm is going to produce one to three inches of rain in an hour pretty easily. So that's a pretty low threshold for flash flooding. Across the Piedmont and the Western Carolinas, you see a little bit higher amounts, but even in the mountains, it's only one to two inches in some cases. So there are spots where it will take very little rain in an hour to cause flash flooding. That's one hour. Here's how much rain it would take in three hours. You could see three inches, or most areas three to four inches, but here only about two, two and a half. So that's pretty low threshold. Six hour totals, yeah, you get five, six. That's a much higher threshold in some of these areas. But look at here. I mean, they're pretty much the same as the one in three hour rainfall rate. So especially areas in Moore County North that saw the flooding from Chantal, it's not gonna take a lot of rain folks to cause flash flooding. So that's why there is a heightened concern for that today, tomorrow, and Friday. So let's get into the future cast. All right, so we're looking at future cast, but I gotta preface this with, this is the things we don't know. The model data, the guidance data, guidance is helpful to kind of give us an idea, but it's not the exact outcome we're gonna see. The thing about this setup is one of the things we know is we have all the parameters in this area for slow moving storms that are gonna produce localized flash flooding and gusty winds. The exact location is unknown until the storms form. I'd love to be able to tell you. I'd love to tell you we're that good at it, but here's the problem. It's like watching boiling water on your stove. You know bubbles are gonna pop up, but it's hard to tell you where that specific bubble is gonna develop until it actually does. So we know this general area. It doesn't mean we don't know anything. It means, yes, the ingredients are in place in this window, like we showed you with the severe weather outlook and the flash flood outlook. It kind of highlights the areas. Then as we get closer, as the storms develop, we have a better idea where they're going to form. So this model is showing you kind of a rough idea, but it's likely these could be forming anywhere. So the rough idea to get is we are going to see storms form mid afternoon along the mountains, and then they're going to drift to the southeast. So over time, you'll see them drift into the Piedmont. And so this is by 6 or 7 p.m. Um, these are big storms. They're producing a lot of rain in short order. Remember, the moisture in the atmosphere is absolutely saturated. So these will be efficient rainfall makers. So notice the timing for the Piedmont. It's in the evening. So right now, during the day, morning and early afternoon, you can get a lot of stuff done. It's not going to be raining until this evening. 
But once these storms form, they're going to be slow movers. Look how they meander across the area, 9, 10. I mean, these are going to linger into tonight. And that's the concern, especially this area. You notice somewhere in here, the potential is there's going to be a cluster of storms that will be slow moving. And if they move over areas that saw rain from Chantal, that's an area that could see flash flooding. And then any urban setting like around Charlotte, even Asheville, Greensboro, um, you know, Hickory, you know, over towards Raleigh, areas where we have a lot of concrete, steel buildings, we call it impervious surfaces, where runoff is exaggerated. That's an urban setting. Think less green space, more stuff. Uh, gutters, downspouts, that stuff forces the water to run off quicker. So if we see heavy rain in those areas, that's where you tend to see flash flooding sooner. But some of these rainfall rates could be so high, it probably won't matter. Notice even into tonight, this is 1.30 in the morning. So this will linger into tonight. That's why we could see flood watches extended in some areas. We already have some in central North Carolina. Overnight, things calm down. And then tomorrow, we're going to do round two. This is starting tomorrow afternoon. You see, we do it all over again. So you're getting the idea. These afternoon and evenings are going to produce these slow-moving storms. And if they hit the same areas, remember, today we're going to see a round of storms. If this same area gets hit again, guess what? flooding becomes a bigger issue. So that's why every day this week, these clusters of storms moving over the same areas, being very efficient rainfall makers, will cause issues. So you get the idea. Obviously, the fact that we have flash flooding the last uh, over the weekend on Sunday, those areas are susceptible. Anybody who sees flash flooding today could see it again tomorrow. So I'll loop this. This is a 48-hour future cast. And again, will the storms be exactly there? This gives you a general idea on what we could see. So for that reason, we want you to stay weather aware for flash flooding, but also the risk for some strong storms, gusty winds. The timing right now for the area is gonna start midday in the mountains, the Piedmont, it's gonna be evening into the nighttime hours. So stay weather aware, flash flooding is a big issue. Turn around, don't drown. We'll hear that a lot over the next couple of days.